All right, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to derive one of my favorite kinematics equations. And this equation is not always available in textbooks. I don't know why that is, but it's not. Um, I know a lot of the books that I use published by Wiley, John Wiley and Sons, have this formula. Uh, that's typically because Wiley tends to be on their game more than the other publishers. That's just my experience with uh, physics books. But I'm going to go ahead and derive this here for you because you can use this uh, in kinematics with constant acceleration. And this is a very good formula. And basically it's a way that you can find the um, displacement by just knowing the initial velocity, final velocity, and time. In other words, there's no acceleration involved there. So let me show you an algebra-based derivation here, algebra-based. And then on the next video, I'm going to show you how to do this using calculus. But this is a very... Uh, let's just say basic derivation of this using algebra. Okay, so I'm going to show you where this comes from. Basically, this comes from the graph. If I have a velocity graph here versus time, okay, you can see the graph right there. And let's say that I start with some initial velocity here, and I go up here, okay? So I'm going to start at this point right here, okay? So I'm going to have, at that point, that point on the graph is going to be t initial, comma v initial, okay? And I'm looking at a straight line right here, okay? And if I went up to t final, comma, v final, okay? Now, what do you notice about that? Well, first of all, what kind of a shape is that? What do you notice about that? That's a what? That's a trapezoid, okay? And so, if I wanted to find out the displacement from this graph, what would I need to do? I would need to find the area, right? So there's a couple ways you can do this. If we have a simple shape like this, we can simply take the area, okay, of a trapezoid because the area of this, okay, remember to say the area. I'm going to use a very simple way to express that. Is going to be the average velocity times the time, okay, which is also just the area of a trapezoid I'm going to show you in a minute but when we have a linear function okay the average is just the middle point so we can literally take the final and the initial add it up and divide by two and I can get my V average here okay there's my V average so it's as if I converted this graph into a square when I do that so my average velocity here is going to be V initial plus V over two Okay, close parentheses here, times the time. So my average velocity, okay, because it's a line, it's right in the middle, okay, times the time. That's the area. And so now, from that equation, I have de defined, basically, my displacement. My displacement is going to be simply V initial plus V over 2 times time. Now that was actually a graphical derivation of it. I didn't even do algebra yet. I'm going to do algebra in a minute. So I'm actually going to show you three ways to do this. And let's just remember the area of a trapezoid. What is the area of a trapezoid? Uh, it's quite simply, um, if you take, if you remember from basic geometry, it's the average of the bases. So base 1 plus base 2 over 2 times the height. Okay. And that's how you find the area of a trapezoid. That's all that this is, right? These are the two bases, the different size bases here, and the height in this case would be like the time, okay? So that's, that's it. That's how you find the displacement from the graph based upon using a simple observation. Now remember, the concept of average velocity is this. If I took this graph over here, let's say I'm going to reproduce this graph over here and I'm going to show you what I mean by average average velocity. Okay, so by moving the original graph over here, I'm going to show you basically what we did. We took the average velocity, right, and we got an equivalent square right there. You see that? A rectangle. We have an equivalent rectangle, right? So by taking this area of the of the trapezoid, I'm just taking this uh, equation here and converting it into like a square, right? 
because what's a square? Well, square is just base times height, right? So I found the average base. So I could even just say, you know, if we're talking about it, if we're getting more philosophical here in terms of what we're really reducing to, I just take the average base times the height, right? So this is the average velocity, which is the average base times the height, okay? And so this is the average value. So remember, average value. What, is that, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to talk about that in the calculus video next. But basically, imagine that this was a cup of water, OK? So let's just say that I have some cup of water here. Um, let's just pretend like this is my cup, like this, right? I have a purple cup. So here's a cup, right? Let's just say I'm holding this cup. I know it's not a perfect cup there, but let's just pretend like it is, OK? So there's a cup here, and there's water in here, and the water's sloshing back and forth and back and forth. And I, I made it slosh all the way over like this, so it's leaning up against this wall. Well, eventually, when that water settles down, it's going to settle down to the average value here. And that's the whole concept of average value. So we can convert any function that we want. We can convert that into an average value when we're dealing with uh, calculus especially. Uh, and that's how I'm going to derive this with calculus. But let's go ahead and derive this now just, just from simple algebra. I showed you the graphical representation here of this equation, which is a very nice equation. Um, but I'm going to start now with the, uh, the algebra-based derivation. OK, so let's get started with this. So the first thing we start with is our basic equation here, which is displacement equals v initial t plus 1 half at squared. So we derived that in the previous video from scratch using calculus, OK? But the parameter to get, from, to, get to here, from here, the parameter that I need to eliminate is going to be acceleration, OK? So basically, I want, I want to eliminate this parameter right here. I want to eliminate that, OK? So from my graph, what is the concept? What is acceleration? Acceleration is the slope of this line, right? It's the slope of this line. So I can basically come over here now, and I can say acceleration equals v final here minus v initial here divided by t final minus t initial there. Okay, And I'm going to basically plug that in now to this equation here, and I'm going to eliminate this parameter of acceleration because this is a nice equation because if you don't have acceleration you can still find the displacement right here okay all right so once I do that my equation is going to start reducing down pretty quickly here okay so I'm going to have v initial t again plus one half and instead of acceleration I'm going to put this in here I'm going to say v final minus v initial over t final minus t initial times t squared. Now I'm going to make an assumption here just to get rid of that t initial. I'm going to assume that we're starting from 0 right here. Okay, So I'm going to just get rid of that little t initial down there. Okay, So if I rewrite this out, I'm going to have displacement is going to equal v initial t plus 1 half v final minus v initial over the time times t squared. Okay, So you'll notice right here, what I can do is I can get rid of one of these t's, and I can make that t to the first. Okay, So now I'm, I'm going to, I have nothing left but v initial, v, and t in this displacement equation. Okay, So if I come back here, rewrite this out, I'm going to say v initial t. And then I'm going to be able to break this up. So I'm going to be able to say vel plus velocity times time over 2. And then this one's going to be minus velocity initial times time over 2. Okay. And so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to combine my like terms. I'm going to group my terms here. Okay. So I've got a term here. I'm going to group these two terms together right here. Okay. So I go down here, and I say delta x equals v initial t minus v initial t over 2. So it's minus half of the value. So v initial t over 2 is what I'm left with, right? Because I started with one of these terms, and I subtracted a half, plus v final t over 2. 
and now I end up with, as my final equation here, V initial plus V final. I can use my distributed property here to factor out a T times time over 2. Okay, so there you go. Now I've derived the displacement, okay, as a function of time with only having the parameters of initial and final velocities, okay? So I've done it two ways now. I've done it from the graph, I've showed you visually, and I've also showed you here. Just remember that this is displacement, and this could be written as position if you wanted. You could write position here equals position initial plus that. Okay, so that's that's one final way you could do this. Let me just go ahead and show you that what I'm talking about. Because delta x equals x final minus x initial, you could also have written this as x final equals x initial plus v initial plus v over 2 times the time. And, and just remember again here, this is a function of time, so it's the position is a function of time. So that's just another way, that's just another way to say the same thing. Uh, there's really no difference. It's just depending upon what the equation is giving you to work with. I typically find that this is a better way to work. If you're dealing with non, if you're dealing with non calculus based equations, I find it much easier to use the displacement. But if you're dealing with a calculus based application or a position based, if you need to know the exact position you started, the exact position that you, you know, that you finished, or you're looking for this one, this is the better equation to use. Okay, so that's, that's it for this video. Um, I, I really like this equation for many, for many reasons. Uh, it's very convenient to use. A lot of books miss it. And it's, it's very, I think it's very telling on the derivation uh, of how to use graphs to derive units and to, to, to use the average value. And then using our algebra here, we can show a, a very simple derivation. All right, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do this using uh, average value, but with calculus, with calculus. So we're going to take the average value of that function, and we're going to integrate it, and we're going to come up with the same result to find the displacement as a function of time using only initial velocity and final velocity. Thanks for watching.